Ashante mon chers, what it do? What you doing? It's Thirsty Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you guys are stuffed. I hope that you got to feast. If you are not in the United States, I still hope that you got to feast today. I hope that you had too many carbs and too much cheese. Even if you were out somewhere going like, I don't know why, but suddenly I'm having so much cravings for carbs and cheese. Maybe you were just feeling empathic uh, cravings with the Thanksgiving themes. We are here for our weekly romance reading. Oh my God, the cards are already just like lunging at them at me. They're like, please take me. Uh, we're here for our weekly romance reading where we touch base with our love lives and see if there's anything, you know, we can look forward to, anything we should be aware of to avoid, how we can overcome ourselves and our shortcomings and our pitfalls and hopefully have a functional relationships. Um, the first card that came up was engagement. Uh, your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. <clears throat> this card could just mean that you are becoming more engaging within your love life. Maybe you're entertaining more suitors. Maybe you've decided to make a profile on a dating app or whatever it is. But get engaged with your love life. Put some energy into it and have fun while you're doing it. If you are in a relationship, it could be that this week you might have potential to deepen your commitment, deepen your devotion, deepen your intimacy. There, it could be that this is a, a nice bonding week and it's kind of like naturally, organically giving you opportunities to grow and strengthen your relationship, taking it forward um, naturally, not because you're like pushing it or, you know, trying to like steer an agenda at all costs. You know what I mean? Just relax, have healthy relationships and let them develop. Um, the other card that uh, popped out was let go of control issues. <laughs> Literally was that not what I just, the last, uh, Thought I was just finishing was that it's just like let them develop healthily and not push your agendas uh, meaning don't push yourself into a situation um, because you're doing that with a sense of like wanting to control an outcome or wanting to control how things are going or maybe how someone is responding or reacting or whatever just let go of control. Let do your thing, you know, be yourself to an extent. I think that we could all use some help and we could all use, um, you know, adjustments and we try things out, see what works and see what doesn't. Right. But, you know, follow your instincts, do your best, use your best judgment based on the experience you've gained so far. And then you have to kind of let the chips fall where they may. But you also have to be willing to read the room. <laughs> Take a hint. Like if something is like the energy's not matching up, then don't keep pushing it. Let it just walk away. Take your hands off because it could settle. It it could settle itself out and resolve itself. Um, but either way, being neurotic around any situation and trying to control it or push it or um, to use aggressive but you know what I mean don't <sighs> manipulation is so crazy because it really hides in plain sight a lot of times sometimes we don't even know that we're being manipulative so just be honest with yourself and examine yourself in at every turn you know at least for a while as a practice when you are meeting any given situation, whether you're presenting or in reaction or whatever, think about like, if, are you in alignment? Meaning are your actions and your words and your intentions and your real feelings all lining up? Are you in integrity? Are you, as you say you are, are you who you say you are? Are you, are your motive? Are you clear of intentions, right? Like, 
Or are you clear about your intentions? So get really clear and be really honest. And be very careful not to manipulate. Try it and like, just be aware that like, if you're doing something in such a way, hoping for a certain result because you're doing something in a certain way, it's like that's that's kind of manipulation. It's it's a really fine line between just being yourself and putting something out there and seeing how it goes and doing something hoping to get a certain response or hoping to elicit a response or hoping to plant a thought, you know what I mean? So just be careful about all of that and really examine yourself honestly <clears throat> so that you can be an absolute integrity and you can, you know, be completely authentic, right? And not be, you know, like just be, own what you want, own what you need, own what you're going after. And then don't make it a, you know, you don't have to make it like a secret or hide it or whatever. If you're trying to hide what you really want, like if you want to be more than friends, right? And you're pretending like if you're like a dude who's like been put in the friend zone and you're trying to be friends with a girl, and you're just trying to get close to her, <clears throat> hoping that one day she'll like you, then that's what I'm saying when it's out of alignment. Like, you need to show your interest. If she doesn't return the interest, then then you figure that out when it happens, and you make your decision based on that. Like, what do you do from there? But, like, don't pretend that you don't want more than what you do. Does that make sense? Because not only are you never going to get what you want, you're not going to have clarity about what you want and you're not in integrity. And so something is off about you in that situation because you're out of alignment. You're trying to present something that's not, <clears throat> that's not accurate in order to try to control the situation or to maintain control of the situation. Does that make sense when it's illustrated out like that? Okay. What else do we need to know? Also, that sometimes there's just timing issues involved, too. It's like sometimes there's nothing you can do. Sometimes you approach a situation perfectly and everything is all, you know, as it should have been. But it's like the timing is just slightly off. So sometimes it's like you do the best you can and, like, let the chips fall where they may. Like, things are out of your control. When it comes to the relationships we have in life, we're always dealing with other people and their free will. Their free will... <clears throat> They also have their own process that they have to go through. So we can't like rush that along Oops. Um, or force someone, you know, um, wedding. <laughs> the situation is, uh, it involves marriage <clears throat> and there could be something that you're doing like being, um, like you may be trying to do something in the hopes of getting a certain result or trying to control a situation that might be backfiring because you're not letting things develop naturally and you're not surrendered and it's affecting your ability to attract like a, mar a marriage level partner or a relationship that could lead to marriage. Um, <clears throat> now, I mean, it's possible that this reading is telling some of the people out there like, hey, you might be getting engaged soon, so just let go of control issues and just like let it all unfold naturally. Or it could be telling some people out there, like um, stop obsessing about engagement and marriage and stop like being controlling and trying to like figure out how every any situation is gonna lead to engagement and marriage, right? Some people are kind of like obsessed with that all the time and they're like always thinking about like a ticking clock and blah, 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 and like, it's, you have to take the pressure off of any situation for anything to grow or to develop or to have any life to it or any passion or any sexiness, right? So let go of control issues, whether you're trying to get married and you're afraid it's not going to happen or whether you think it might be happening soon or whether you've just met someone and you're like, I don't know, I don't know. It's just like, just give up control, right? Let it all go. Just have fun. Be in the moment. Let it develop authentically by being presenting yourself honestly and letting someone else be honest with you. <clears throat> because how else are you going to have the kind of relationship with the intimacy level and honesty to lead to an engagement or a marriage if you are not allowing that person to have, you know, 
their feelings and you're hiding yours, right? So you have to let everybody be safe to be seen and heard and feel what they feel. And if somebody doesn't feel the same way, then it's like, then you have to like free yourself to go elsewhere. <clears throat> All right, and what is our ooh, codependency? Addictions are affecting your love life. So this is very interesting. We've got engagement and wedding and letting go of control issues and codependency. And so I think that there are a lot of people who rush into um, commitments because they are codependent and they don't know how to be just satisfied in their own company, right? Um, and then there are other people like who, you know, they're not completely, you know, um, unhappy outside of a relationship, but they have codependent tendencies that present in other relationship dynamics. Um, like the narcissist person who keeps people on back burners. That's a codependent dynamic, right? So I think that the assignment right now in this season of our lives as we're like transitioning into this like big new cycle and timeline and up level because we're starting this brand new journey. I think that the, or the romance angels are wanting us to really get clear on our, our patterns that show up, our codependency, our tendencies like that, um, and nip them in the bud and finally heal them once and for all. And start making our taking actions and making decisions and adopting behaviors and standards and rules for yourself that are elevated out of your old ways of doing things that were more codependent, right? We're healing and we're moving forward. And you know, everybody's on a spectrum of codependency to some degree. So it's not to say like, don't get in any relationships until it's all healed. Like that could be forever. So we're always a work in progress, but the, the relationships that will work out better than others are people who are eyes wide open and honest with each other about like, Hey, this is my tendency. I tend to be this way. Um, you know, and it's like codependency is someone who's looking for someone else to fill a void, right? A codependent person maybe doesn't think that there's any like real fulfillment because like in life without love and marriage and all of that stuff, right? Some people put it so high on a pedestal that they, you know, when they when they do get it, they're like, "Oh wow, this wasn't the fantasy that I projected." And they're like, "Oh, then they're devastated because they're like, nothing's ever going to make me happy, right?" So, everything is all in its place. But I do think that we are being invited to go deeper into those um codependent tendencies that come out in our um romantic lives. Then examine them further. Where did they really come from within your family, um, within your early childhood, within maybe your relationships through your adolescence? Like think about all of these things, these patterns, how they played out, how they're connected. And then as you're facing new opportunities in your current situation, try not to go back and do the things that you used to do. Try not to go back and do things the same way that you did. Try not to think the same way that you did or have the same approach or the same strategy. Like, try to adopt a beginner's mind in a way, um, but with the wisdom and discernment that you've earned, right? But just try to do it differently. Try to be, try something new. Imagine yourself in your higher self's shoes at your highest sense of self-worth act from there, or at least try to fake it till you make it, right? We're just practicing every day, just a rehearsal. <laughs> All right, y'all, what a, what a spread. We have engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. The situation involves marriage, but addictions are affecting your romantic life. So if you do have a new budding romance, relax, take it slow, let it evolve naturally. Take your foot off the gas.
let it breathe, right? Just slow, small, steady. <sighs> I'm full. I'm gonna have a bath. I don't even think I need any more desserts or leftovers. I mean, we had several amazing desserts in the spread and we all like just decided to eat all of them. <laughs> I don't think I could eat another leftover tonight. I need to drink water. I'm gonna have a hot bath. I'm gonna drink water. I'm gonna have that 420 break, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna watch something good. Uh, I don't know if y'all like the show Dead to Me on Netflix with Christina Applegate and uh, her name is escaping me right now, but Linda, she's got an Italian name, but it's an amazing, amazing series. Highly recommend it. It is a uh, drama with dark humorousness, um, but realistic lifeness. It's a, it's a good one. All right, y'all. Well, I will see you tomorrow. I hope you have a thank happy Thanksgiving. I hope you get some good sleep tonight. All right, ciao.